Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question was, Frederick, can five years of experience really replace a computer science degree? So let's get into it. Or a computer, it was an undergraduate degree or something specific like that. Eh, anywho, so this is a pretty good question and it touches on something that I think is it's a very tricky thing to, it, it is a tricky thing and it's a kind of, it's a very hard thing to answer, but it's one of the most common things that I try to help people out with on the comment sections and things of this nature. So I will make an argument to you and this is an argument I've made a few times so far and that is that what's important when you want to be a software developer is not the hours that you put in, it is the quality of the time that you put in. Just as weight training, it doesn't matter if you lift like a really light weight a hundred times because you're going to get more gains from lifting something that is more heavy fewer times. And the same thing kind of applies here. You see, it's, I mean, a person who works for five years the, there's not really a lot of context given in that situation because an example is that all right if you work as for if you for some reason you studied I don't know some other like mathematics or something like that and you somehow managed to get into one of the like really really big IT companies and they actually provide you with the most up, like industry relevant training then those five years you spend doing that is very likely going to result in something that is more like something that is much more valuable than a computer science degree and that is actual work experience because computer science degree the degree the degree that, that you get from computer science is just a preparation for you to be at, actually be able to act on, with your skills like to actually use that knowledge to do actual work and unless that is what you're getting prepared for, you're going to find it to be less valuable. It's as simple as that. But if you flip it and you say, because the, that's not the normal case, most people start out, like if you want to work for the big IT companies, they start out by actually going to school first or do the preparations. And the those preparations are, it's not like, it's just we do it. Like people who have an official education, it's not like we do it just because it's fun. Some may, of course, a part of it is that, but most of us do it because it prepares us to do the actual job. But the people who kind of shortcut into say freelance work and like go directly into that sort of stuff, who are self-taught and so forth, I mean, it's still possible for you to be able to get a job and to be able to do the sort of work. But you, we have to consider that you, unless you are, how do I put this? I mean, if you learn the same things in your spare time as you learn, you would learn at a university, then your education is pretty much equal. Your knowledge will be equal, but that's not usually how it goes. What usually happens is that a freelancer or somebody who is self-taught will learn certain things fairly well, uh, but they will not be forced uh, be exposed to more, to more in, like they won't have as in-depth knowledge, as much in-depth knowledge as somebody who has taken the official channels, if you will. I've, I'm working with a junior, like a co-worker today who is self-taught and I'm basically in charge of training her. And although she has relevant work experience, she's been working for as a freelancer for two years, I think. I can very clearly see that although she's not, you know, she's not a beginner, she knows some, she knows how to write software. But I can see that there are fairly big holes in certain areas of her knowledge. And that is something that I see quite often in people who ha don't have an official education. But that doesn't mean that there are no, like, there are benefits with that as opposed to having a f an official education. What usually happens when you have a college kid who comes in is that they have a really good understanding of the fundamentals of programming, like the different paradigms and, you know, how to, how to, use the different mental tools and the different mental models that we use in software development, but they don't have all that much experience with tooling. Like they have, like my junior that I'm training, I mean, she knew about Git and she knew about ver like version control and React and like all of these different frameworks and uh, a, a range of tools, right? Pretty much from day one. Whereas another junior that I trained a while back who was fresh out of college, but had like an official degree and like all of that good stuff, 
if was completely lost on this stuff had to basically learn git and like all of this stuff from scratch so there are pros i mean there are different considerations to make regardless of which route you pick and that's the thing that makes this so hard to answer if one can replace the other i it's it's almost impossible to say because there are been there it's it varies so much from person to person I mean, there's nothing stopping a freelancer, as I said, from doing the same thing as the person who took the official education. Like, they can actually study the same subject and learn all of this stuff. And if they have been working during that time, of course that's going to replace five years of education, unless that education that, that per the person who's, who went with the college run is, <coughs> is getting is somehow required or like an absolute necessity and allows them to do a job that the self-taught or like the person who has been working has like if, if if it replaces that knowledge that's that's the best answer i can give you it's uh it's almost an impossible thing to say so basically what i want you to take away from this is that when it comes to work experience or like five years of work experience versus going to school for five years it's a basically impossible to say which one is going to be more valuable to you. What I can tell you is that it's likelier that you will get a job if you take the official education, education route. Not because you're necessarily going to be smarter or that you're going to know a lot more than a person who worked for five years. It's just that if you go in without any prior knowledge into the industry, it's very unlikely that you will get a job in the first place. Which means that the person who has been working for five years, unless they somehow magically fell into a job where they're going to train that person for five years, uh, they're very likely going to start out as freelancers. And that is, a, as I've said, a fairly big gamble because odds are that you may learn things that are relevant, but you may also miss out on quite a lot of knowledge that some would consider to be fairly required in order to do, like, to do proper software development. So which you pick, it, it's kind of up to you. All I can say is that for most people, going with official education is the safe route but it's going directly into the workforce and starting, starting like the actual work experience, of course, that's always going to be more valuable. It's just about quality versus quantity here. Because if you go in and you start working as a freelancer and you work in some niche, little, niche way that doesn't really have much relevancy in, in the workforce, you might just find out that you basically, even though you've been working for five years, that still hasn't um, like ended up with you having the necessary skills and then the people with the official education are very likely going to pass you. That's just what I've seen myself. Have a great day.